Okay, AP Chem students, this is really, really the last video. Uh, we have to talk about Faraday's law and the opposite of galvanic or voltaic cells, electrolytic cells. So in an electrolytic cell, the picture is cut off here on my screen, an outside voltage source and an electrical current are used to run a non-spontaneous or a non-thermodynamically favorable redox reaction. This is exactly what happens when we recharge our batteries. Um, I have a little demo. If you have me in class, you'll see this um, uh, where I run a non-spontaneous reaction backwards um, and using an outside current and voltage source. So if, in the, in the demo that I do in class, um, I'm actually plating zinc onto a copper penny. And we know that that doesn't happen normally. You guys tried this out, placing um, copper into a zinc solution and zinc did not play it out on the copper. However, I can do that. I can get that reaction to run with an electric current. So if I wanted to plate out a certain amount of metal or if I had some jewelry that I wanted plated with a certain thickness of metal, I'm gonna need to know how long to run that reaction. This, how long to run the reaction, is directly related to how many coulombs, that's units of charge, are being passed through the reaction. And Faraday's law defines that for us. Here's Faraday's law. It says I equals Q divided by T. So I, if we think back to physical science, that's current in amps. Q is charge in coulombs. And then T is time in seconds. So to do problems like what's shown at the bottom of your page, these are just dimensional analysis with new terms. You just have to get a little creative. So here's some tips for doing dimensional analysis. The first tip is that when you're asked problems like the ones shown below, you uh, shown below on your notes, you will need to incorporate Faraday's constant. in most terms. Faraday's constant, remember, is the link between the charge and electrons. So let's look at it, and in this case, it's convenient to use the constant values, the, the units given on your, actually, it may be convenient to use the, the units given on your formula sheet, or it may be convenient to use the ones that we've been talking about, which is joules per volt times mole. The other unit that you would see, or the one on your formula sheet, is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. The other term that you're going to use in your dimensional analysis is something that's also on your formula sheet that may not be intuitive to use, and it's one amp. On your formula sheet, it tells you that one amp is one coulomb per second, and maybe it doesn't tell you this now that I'm thinking about it. I don't have the formula sheet in front of me, but if we look at Faraday's law, we've got one, uh, we've got amps equals charge per second, coulombs per second. So that's where those units come from or that's where this relationship comes from. We can use these like fractions in our dimensional analysis problems. So give the problems below a try, keeping in mind um, my hint is to start with the time that you're running it for or start with the amount of electrons that are being transferred. Or excuse me, yeah, how many electrons are being transferred. So time or the amount of electrons can, can be a good starting place. When you are ready to see the answers, unpause the video. Okay, if you're struggling with the first one, no worries, I'll walk you through it. I realize this can be really challenging the first time around. So we start with 45 minutes. We are gonna run a cell for 45 minutes, plugged into our voltage source. It's asking how many electrons are going to be moved if we're using a current of 3.85 amps. I could move more electrons if I used more current. I could move fewer electrons if I use less current. So we're getting from time to mole of electrons. So think back to like pre-AP chemistry basic stuff. If I'm in minutes, remember all our time stuff for Faraday's law is happening in seconds. So at first I'm gonna go 60 seconds is equal to one minute. Then I've got seconds. And then remember, I'm trying to work towards mole of electrons. So what units have something to do with seconds and maybe moles of electrons, maybe charge stuff. 
that unit, hopefully we realize, is going to be charge. So 3.85 amperes, remember an ampere is just the same thing as a coulomb per second. Right, so if we use this relationship, 3.85 amperes, think about it as 3.85 coulombs are getting moved per second, I can set that up in dimensional analysis. So second down here, 3.85 coulombs. And then lastly, I'm trying to get from coulombs to mole electrons. That relationship is going to be our Faraday's constant. So 96,485 coulombs per one mole of electrons. So we should be able to solve this out. We can see that all the units cancel, and we get 0 0.108 moles of electrons. Okay, so if we've got conditions in question A, that means the same um, current, how many moles of solid copper could be produced. So I'm trying to get to moles of Cu. To start off this one, let's think if we've got copper sulfate, that's Cu2 plus aqueous, and actually if it's molten, it's going to be in liquid, but how many electrons do I need to reduce it to solid copper? In this case, I can clearly see I need two electrons to get cop solid copper, right? <clears throat> so let's start there and think about where we want to go. <clears throat> if we've got the conditions shown above, remember I'm going to be able to move 1.108 moles of electrons. So if we start with that many moles of electrons are getting moved, I've already done the calculations to tell me that with those conditions I can move 0.108 moles of electrons if I run the cell for 45 minutes at 3.85 amps. So 0.108 moles of electrons. I know that for every one mole of copper, two plus, that's getting reduced, how many electrons do I need? I need two moles of electrons based on my balance or my half reaction shown above. And then I know that for every one mole of Cu2 plus that gets reduced, I'm going to form one mole of Cu solid. So doing this math will help me come to my answer of 0 0.0540 moles of copper. And then try the last one on your own. Remember, start with time. See if you can work all the way through it by yourself. I will tell you the answer that you should come up with at the very, very end is 11.5 grams of aluminum. So see if you can work that, and if you can't get through that one, we will go over it in class together. Have a great afternoon.